Hey Rebels, how you guys going? Hope you guys are staying warm and uh, in the Sunday wind. It's a bit nasty today, but the sun's out and that's always good. Um, just really quickly, wanted to throw some shout outs uh, for some massive wins for the, the club over the weekend. Uh, the fours winning against Watsi, that's awesome. You know, that, that Watsi would be spewing about that. 13 11 is a great one. Snatched it. That's great. Awesome. Well done, guys. That's fantastic. Uh, the threes winning also 10 4. Uh, and, and the twos, massive win. I think they had like 15 runs scored in the last innings. It was massive, massive win. So well done, guys. One sort of didn't quite get it done on uh, yesterday, but that's okay. Not a big deal. Hey, Braden. Hi, Aline. How are you guys going? Um, just a couple other quick shout outs to the Diamond Valley kids. Uh, Max, Angelina, Campbell, Ryan, Josh, and David. Uh, congratulations for playing this weekend. Uh, I hope you guys win it. I'm not sure what the result is because I know you guys have made the final, if I remember correctly. Uh, I hope you guys win it and good luck with everything like that. Um, today I want to talk about uh, how disappointment can play the same as anxiety and how the two are very very alike okay uh, so what we've seen what I've seen over the course of the season this is, wasn't yesterday this was over the course of the season we've had uh, players just go and make mistakes okay and they get disappointed and they get a little upset and and you know what I just want to say this I'm wrapped that it does upset you I really am I am so wrapped that it upsets you because if it didn't upset you, there would be a problem, okay? It's upsetting you because it means something to you. And I think that that's important because if it didn't mean anything to you, then, then you wouldn't be there. So um, you might hear on the background, my son's watching a movie, Pirates of the Caribbean, so it's gonna be a little loud. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, and, and today I just want to have a chat about, and if you've got anything to add or, or if you've got any questions, throw them out there straight away because this is a really a big one. Okay, it's a big one and, and how how we play and how we show up and how we present ourselves. So, uh, I will, how are you going? Um, Jaden, how are you doing? Um, Kathleen, Gavin, Diane, that's good. Awesome, awesome show up. Uh, so today, how the two play out the same is very, uh, how anxiety and disappointment are very similar, is that with anxiety, we do it in two different ways. We can either be aggressive or we can be avoidant, okay? And when we avoid it, we start to isolate ourselves and we separate ourselves and we try to hide a little bit. And where uh, aggress aggressive anxiety is when we're up in people's faces and we're yelling, we're screaming, we're kicking things and carrying on. Now, in terms of disappointment, when we're playing, what we find is that if you're an avoidant disappointer, you'll sit up one end of the at one end of the dugout away from the team and you sit there and you're almost sulking. Uh, hi Bo, hi Elio. Um, and, and I think that that's, that's when it's not necessarily attention you're after, you're isolating yourself, okay? And so when we do that, you'll find that players will come to you, players will come walking over you. That They won't just, as you're doing high fives as you're walking into the dugout, you'll hide. Okay, so you'll sit in the one end of the dugout and then the rest of the team will get up one by one. They'll come over to you or, or the core group of them will come over to you and they'll come over and say, hey, it's okay. Hey, it's okay, get the next one. So if you have, if you go and make a bad play or you misread something, you misread a fly ball, you get picked off or maybe, you know, you misread the signals and you steal when you shouldn't have or you have a negative at bat when you just go three, out th you know, three pitches, three, stri uh, three strikes and you sit down. Uh, that's That's when you know, we tend to get a little bit upset and disappointed in ourselves. So we isolate ourselves. So if, if you find that people are coming to you and they're saying to you, hey, you're all right, you're all right. Hey, it's okay, get the next one. Have a good another next bat. Don't worry about it, get the next ground ball and all that sorts of stuff. Then you're, you are doing an, a, an avoidant strategy and you're sort of hiding away, okay? Now, from an aggressive standpoint, which is very similar to what we see in, in, in anxiety people. Just so you know, I'm a counselor, so that's how I, I know this. Uh, we see guys throwing bats, hitting helmets, throwing balls, kicking stuff in a dugout, going out the back, punching things, and, and carrying on in that sort of way. Now, we try to stamp that out as best as we can because it's, it doesn't leave uh, a good taste in the team's mouth. However, uh, that's your anxiety strategy and that's your discipline and that's how disappointment and that's all you are you're disappointed uh, 
that's that's how you're playing it out. You're playing it out in an aggressive way. So, how do we go about this? Both are good and so, and both are bad. Okay, N neither are, are, are anything. They just are, and that's just the way you play it out and the way you allow it to come out and play. So. I don't want to sit here and say one's worse than the other because they both leave uh, the team uneasy, okay? When we don't understand what's happening, okay? So, uh, for me, and, and I'll just use me and myself as an example, uh, you know, yesterday I had a really bad battle. I go up there and, and I, I watch four pitches, okay? Okay, and two fastballs and a curveball, and I watched it go by, and I'm like, oh, wow, and I struck out, okay? Now, I was disappointed in myself, and I, and I sit down and I, I go into uh, an aggressive inside my head, like you're an idiot what, or you're a moron, because I do anxiety aggressively. And, and so you're a moron, come on, man, you're better than that, okay? And I have a higher expectation of myself. Now, if I play that out physically, that's not gonna be received well by the team. Now, when we're looking at disappointment, and this is where it differs from anxiety, is, Understand why you're disappointed. Recognize why you're disappointed. And we do, do disappointment in a couple of different ways. And, and I need you guys to take an inventory of this because it's important. And if you don't, if you're not recognized and don't have the um, awareness to understand why, how you're doing disappointment and why you're disappointed, then you'll find that you, you could be disappointed for the wrong reasons, okay? So, the main ones that we can be disappointed for with is how our expectations of ourselves. So my my expectation of my strikeout yesterday was that I'm going to beat myself up about it because I'm no good. Okay, I'm better than that, and I know it. Okay, so I'm beating myself up, and and so I'm doing that for me, not because of the way it looks with the team or the way the team will receive it, the situation in the game. I'm doing that because of me. I'm disappointed in my personal um, approach to it all, okay? The other way you can go about disappointment is you can be disappointed for the way it looks, okay? Not because of the way you contributed to the team or the way you lack of contribu contributing to the team, I should say. You can look at it and say, okay, well, you know what? I just, I should be upset here. I should be disappointed here. So then you, you go into isolation, okay? And this is where it's gonna be really difficult and the team around you will notice this and whether they say it, whether they, whether they talk about it, it's happening inside, they're recognizing it, that you're just disappointed because you're disappointed, because you think you should, or because it looks bad on me, or because, you know what, the team were, were saying, okay, hey, you've got the goods and I didn't perform and so I should be upset. When maybe you shouldn't have, okay? I'll give you an example. All right, and I know that, that that's a bit of a riddle, uh, but let me give you an example, okay? So we, we've got some really great junior players, and um, and I hope that it's, it's okay here. When, when we saw uh, Trinell uh, the other day, uh, a couple of weeks ago, goes in, didn't quite get a hit, but was quite was upset with himself, but he had a six, seven pitch at bat, okay? Now, should he be disappointed with himself? Maybe if he got a pitch that he could handle, and he missed the opportunity, but that's an opportunity thing. That's not you should, something you should be disappointed in. That's about execution. So, cool. I missed it, and he came in. So he came in, and he was really good about it. He was very good about it. Yesterday, especially, he had two bats, two really long bats, and he came in. And he was really good about it. You know what? These things happen. Yep, cool, no worries. And then he talked it through. Now, if you're doing this in an, in in an, uh, a negative way, and you're looking at your disappointment, and you're thinking I should be upset then you'll, you'll find that you'll sit on the bench and there'll be nothing between your ears. There'll be nothing happening at all. You'll be physically upset, but nothing will be happening in here because your brain is saying to yourself, well, should we really be upset? I've actually got no reason to be upset here. You did the best you could with what you had available to you at the time. So that to me says, that's the time when you think you think you should be upset. But that doesn't mean that you must be upset. What I really loved about Trinell yesterday was that, yes, he had two bats where I think he struck out twice. Uh, he took really long counts, and I'm talking six, seven, eight pitches, and then come in and sat down, and he recognized, okay, some days it's gonna happen like that, and he talked it through. 
He talked it through with, with one of the older guys. And that is what makes a good, solid player. That's where it's at. Because now I'm not... I, yes, I'm disappointed because I didn't execute. But you know what? I'm going to get this out so I can move on and take it out in the field. And when we don't recognize how we do disappointment, what happens is, is you become avoidant on the field. You become aggressive on the field. Okay? And that's how we, we start to see that anxiety is the same thing. So if we, if we recognize that we're, uh, when we're anxious, we're aggressive, we start to be aggressive with multiple different people and multiple different ways. And so when we go into those situations, we become even more aggressive. Before you know it, that aggressive nature will isolate you and then you won't have any friends and, you will, and you'll find that you won't connect anywhere and your anxiety goes up and up and up to a point where you don't want to be at parties, you don't want to go to work, you don't want to go to school, you don't want to do anything, okay? Avoidance strategies is exactly the same. I just isolate myself. So when I go to work, when I go to school, when I go to parties, when I go and see my friends, when I go see my family, I'll isolate and sit in one corner and hide, okay? Same thing can happen when we go out to the field. If you don't recognize how you do disappointment, you could take it out on the field, and I can guarantee you, the next ball hits, gets hit your way, you will still not be happy with it. Whether you make a diving catch or not, and you'll sit there, oh yeah, that's just a makeup for my bad at bat. Or yeah, it's a makeup for the last error. And you, and you brush it off. When instead, maybe we can recognize, okay, cool. Yes, I had, I, I'm disappointed that I didn't execute. I had a really bad at bat, didn't work well for me. I'm going to give myself one minute and I'm out of it. I'm going to give myself two minutes and I'm done. I'm going to give myself to the end of that innings and then I'm out of it. And I've got, I've got another job to do. And it's not about washing it off. It's just about letting it come out and play and then letting it go. Giving it and, and acknowledging the fact that, yes, I'm disappointed because I didn't do it. And then maybe we can take in, in a part where Trinell did yesterday and talk it out. Just get the energy out. Yes, I'm disappointed and I messed up. Okay, cool. Who's here that I can just go bleh and vomit it on? Okay? Go and vomit it on someone. That's the whole idea. A few weeks ago, we talked about mentors. Go and hit up a mentor. You know? Go and sit next to somebody who's a little older than you or with a little bit more experience is probably a better term. A little bit more experience and just vomit on them. Okay? And you can even go and say it to them because they're probably watching this video at some stage. You can go over to them and just say, hey, do you mind if I vomit on you? Do you mind if I just dump this on you? Hey, you know, with that at bat, don't go looking for a, a way of fixing anything. Just deal with your, your, uh, your disappointment. It's okay. It's okay to be disappointed. Okay? So we had a, a couple of times where the wind was just howling yesterday. Okay? And each time the ball hit, got hit into the outfield, it just took off. And then it, it moved away. And then there was times there when, you know, in any normal day, a little chink and shot that you know our middle infield would run and go and catch wouldn't get caught because it get pushed a little further, and you're expecting that outfielder to come in and go and get it, but it's judged differently, so the conditions weren't read great. Now we had some guys that didn't quite read it well, and were really upset and really disappointed themselves because they didn't that they looked bad. Okay, it looked bad, but you know what? At the end of the day, you have those days. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes you read it, and sometimes you don't, and sometimes you know what? You just have to say, Mother Nature, you beat me today. You know, it, it happens. But the key to that is recognizing, yes, I'm disappointed. Great, that's fantastic, because disappointment is a great motivator. Cool, what am I going to do about that? I'm going to give myself an hour after the game, I'm done with it, and I wash it off and I get on with it. Yes, I need to talk it out. Maybe I need to just accept the fact that today just wasn't my day. That's cool. Let's move on. And, and yes, yesterday was one scenario, but we've had scenarios like that nearly every week. Almost every single week we've had issues with, with one or two players that, that haven't quite recognized that this is the way I do disappointments. This is the way I do anxiety. How do I get rid of it and how do I move on? Because the quicker I can get on with what's happening for me, the quicker I can have an impact and the quicker I can get back to the job that I was there to do and contribute. Yeah, contribute to the team and be a part of the group. So recognizing how we do disappointment and how I can guarantee you that disappointment and anxiety will run together. And if you do disappointment in a uh, avoidant way, okay, 
you'll probably do anxiety in an avoidant way. If you do disappointment in an aggressive way, you'll probably do anxiety in an aggressive way. Neither are bad, neither are good. They're just there. And it's something to be aware of. And it's something to be to acknowledge. And say, okay, cool, I'll, I'll just do this. So if you, if you recognize, and this is the goal that we need to take from this. If I recognize that I'm an avoidant person with my anxiety, go and be avoidant. Go and get it out. Don't go and push it to be, to be aggressive or to go and, uh, I, I've got to get all this energy out. Recognize that I've got the energy, okay? And now deal with it. Recognize what you need to do. If you're a, and, and we'll go into a little bit about that in, in a second, because I'll give you one little piece of advice for that. Uh, great advice. Thank you, Sophie. Appreciate it. Um, if you do uh, do it in a, an aggressive way, recognize that what's happening in your body and go and expel that energy and then come back. Go and do what you've got to do to get that out. Don't hold on to it because it will go in, go on into the rest of your game and your team will be affected by it. I can guarantee you. Okay, I can guarantee you that. Always does. So what can we do? Once we recognize what that we are avoidant or we are or we are aggressive, the reason why we do this is because what happens is once our body takes over, and that's what's happening when we're anxious and disappointed, our bodies takes over. It's not a thinking thing anymore, our body's taken over. And we go into the one part of our brain, I know this is getting real science see for you guys, but uh, I just thought I'd, I'd give you the history and, and the understanding around it. We go into the part of the brain that is the most uh, historical, okay? And it's the one part that has never uh, evolutionized, and it's because we see threat and we need to be uh, reactive to threat, okay? And, and you would have heard this before, it's fight, flight, or freeze, okay? Now, once we enter that part of the brain, okay, our cognitive function comes way down and our, our body gets more aroused and more excited and more ready to fire because we're either gonna fight or we're gonna run. That's what we're doing, okay? Which is the same as anxiety, which is the same as disappointment. We're either gonna be avoidant, okay, or we're gonna be aggressive, okay? We're either gonna run, avoidant, or we're gonna be aggressive and fight, okay? It's exactly the same thing. All right, it's just said in a different way with different outcomes, okay? So, if we recognize this, and Brucey, how you doing, buddy? Uh, if we recognize this and we, and we notice that we do things in an avoidant way or an aggressive way, recognize what's happening in our body. Recognize where you feel it. Where do you feel it? Some, like, I'll give you an example. Uh, for me, I feel it in my legs because for me, I, because I do uh, anxiety aggressively, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to run, I'm ready to punch, I'm ready to fight, let's do it, let's go. We're into it, okay? Where uh, I know some kids, because I, I do a lot of work counseling with kids, uh, that they might feel it in their heart space, okay? And the majority of the time I've noticed that, and this is just, this may not mean anything and it may not be right, but what I've noticed is when, uh, with, with the, I can't tell you how many kids I've worked with, but what I have noticed is that most kids that are avoidant tend to feel it up here a little more. And most kids that are aggressive tend to feel it in their arms. Um, they feel it in their shoulders and they, they tend to feel it a little bit more in their legs or in their gut. Uh, it, that's just one thing I've noticed and I could be wrong here, but it's just, I, I, just something that I've picked up throughout the years of, of working with kids. So when we work out that yes, this is where I'm feeling it. This is where I'm feeling the muscles. They're all tight, they're constricted and they're, they're, they're almost aching. I'm, I'm that oh, tense, almost aching. Okay, when we work out that's where, where we're feeling it, we want to do something called the wet noodle. All right? And now it's a really funny term, but it works, it really does. And it may not work for you straight away. Okay, and it may, it, it's like a building a muscle. Anything you learn, it's like building a muscle. You get in there and you pump weights, okay? And you know, it, just because you pump weights once doesn't mean you're gonna get big and strong. You've got to continually build the muscle so that it can get strong and tough. This is the same, okay? And your brain and your emotions are exactly the same, exactly. And understanding, hi Brad, how are you doing? Um, and, and understanding what's happening in your body is exactly the same. You know, build that muscle, okay? Build that awareness. So the wet noodle, how does it work? So have you ever held a, a, a cold, wet noodle? After it's been cooked, yeah, you hold it up and it sort of just wobbles around. Yeah, I know it's a really nasty sort of movement, but it just wobbles around and it's soft and it's, and it's floppy and it's, and it's really uh, just relaxed and it just jiggles around a little bit, yeah? That's what we want to turn our muscles in. 
we want to turn those cold, those hot, tense, restricted muscles into a relaxed, floppy noodle. Okay? And you can do it through your mind's eye. And the way I like to see it, uh, for me personally, uh, what works for me is I, I, I see it as like like a cold rush going through my body, pushing, going through my head, all the way through, throughout my whole body, and then pushing out my, my toes. Okay? And as it goes through, it relaxes my muscles and it's nice and calm and my body as my body starts to relax from from the neck down it just starts to relax i find that my cognitive function so my, my ability to think comes back and i'm stronger and faster and, and i'm able to be able to communicate what i'm trying to say so much easier okay and, and if you've ever sat in front of a camera and tried to do this let me tell you i can tell you now uh you get a little tense okay because you, you don't get an audience to talk to all right and so understand that you know, doing lives is kind of building that muscle for me too. Once we recognize that that's how we can do it, some, some other people I know, some kids, they like, to, they like to look at it and go, okay, my muscles are tight and tense, and all of a sudden they just go like this, and they just sort of shake, all right? And the, and the more muscle you build around this, you'll be able to find you can do it in seconds, okay? 10 seconds max, five seconds max. You, it'll just happen for you, okay? You'll be able to do it within and a bat. You'll be able to do it before the pitcher throws a ball. That's how quick you'll be able to do it. Okay, and I've seen it. I, I've done it, and it works. So as as we start to relax our, our muscles and we turn those muscles into cold, wet noodles, we take a deep breath, and we hold for four. One, two, three, four. And you find that your shoulders start to, to dip. Your whole body just starts to... Just let go. And, and now we're not forcing things, we're allowing things to happen. And then we're in, then we're in our power. Because not only are we able to see, think, and, and feel so much more, which allows us to be a little more adaptable, we're not fighting anymore. We're not ready to run. We're not fighting, we just are. And everything we've done before, and all the training we've done before, is now accessible again, up here, okay? So, and that's the wet noodle does that. And there's so many other things. The other thing too you can do is uh, uh, diaphragmic breathing, okay, where you're breathing from your diaphragm. And the easiest way is, you know, some people just say, breathe it out, breathe it out. Well, you know, if you've ever breathed it out before, you'll find that you start to hyperventilate, okay? Breathe it into a, a paper bag, don't do that, that's just dumb, <laughs> all right? The best way of doing that is to put your hands like this, put them over in the back of your head, and notice how when you do that, you automatically sit up straight. And as you take a deep breath in, you will start to breathe from down here. And, and you don't even need, need to try. You start to breathe from down here. That's good diaphragmic breathing because you're, you're in a position to do it. Where most people, when they talk about diaphragmic breathing, says, yeah, just breathe, just breathe, just breathe. What does that mean? Yeah, it never worked for me, all right? That breathing thing never really worked for me. Diaphragmic breathing never really worked for me because I get so tense and tight uh, that Breathing doesn't do it for me. And I tend to breathe a little too fast. So if you find yourself breathing a little too fast, wet noodle's really good. Because uh, it's a really quick way of relaxing your body. All right? So why does our body get all tight and tense? Well, we access that, that old part of our brain. That part where it's fight, flight, or freeze. Okay? Like I explained before. But with a twist. So, you know, it, it never evolutionized because we need to protect ourselves. Okay? So... The reason why is because of perceived threat, not a real threat. If it was a real threat, you'd run. If it was a real threat, if you're about to get hit by a bus, you're running away, okay? If you're aware that bus is coming, you're running, okay? If you ever find it, uh, like a kid, like if you, if you see a young child walking across the road, okay? That young child will walk across the road. They won't run because they don't see the threat. The car's not a threat to them yet. But you see an older person, like, say, you know, say, say say someone in their 40s or 50s, you see a person walking across the road, they know they're going to be a little slower, or even in their 60s, they know they're going to be a little slower, so they run as fast as they can. No matter, even if they're slower, they still try and run faster because they're trying to protect themselves, okay? So it's important to recognise that it's still there, right? And until we understand that what is a threat and what is a perceived threat, we can change the outcome. So if it's a real threat, run, get out of it, as quick as you can.
<laughs> okay, so it's like a bean ball. So if someone's throwing a fastball down and into into the uh, into the uh, the batter's box, move, man, because it's gonna. All right, no matter, Robin's gonna solve that problem. So run, yeah. But if it's not a perceived threat and you find your heart's fluttering, you start to you start to sweat just standing there, getting ready to hit. That's a perceived threat. And so the, the tighter our muscles get, the harder we grab the bat, the, 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 the more we feel our legs getting all tight, our breathing loses control. We're now no longer utilizing our skill. We are utilizing our body and our, and our ability to fire and fight. Okay, so we want to back that off as best as we can. Wet noodle. If you find that you're sitting in the dugout or, you know, something's happened, you've made an error and you're breathing out of rhythm and it's a little faster, okay? Diaphragmic breathing, you know, remember this one. Just breathe it out. Okay, breathe in, hold it for four. Okay, and get control of your breathing again. But if you feel intense, tight and tense, wet noodle. Every time, wet noodle, okay? I can't, explain, I can't stress that to you enough. And if the wet noodle doesn't work for you, let's find another one. Contact me, we'll find another one. Okay, but we, what we want to do is recognize that our perceived threat, okay, is only perceived threat. You're not really in danger, okay? So you're anxious and you're disappointed and, and all these things that are happening because of a, of a perceived threat that may or may not be right, okay? So where's the start? Let's go just quickly rehash where, where we started from. All right. Disappointment, recognize how you do disappointment because it's a link to how you do anxiety. Do I do it in an avoidant way or do I do it in an aggressive way? Neither are bad. I want to stress that. Neither are bad. Okay? That's just how you do it. And that's cool. Let's be aware of it. Let's recognize how we do it. Because if you're avoidant, maybe you need to breathe. If you're aggressive, maybe you need to wet noodle something. Okay? Maybe you need to find a way of relaxing and taking yourself out of that space. Remember that as our body gets more engaged and more uh, fiery, okay, and more um, just tight, tense, and, and, and out of control, we lose our ability to think, okay? Our cognitive function comes down, all right? So we want to make sure that we recognize how we do disappointment, how we do anxiety, because that will change the way we get the information from here. So all the training you've done is out the window as soon as your body gets all tight and tense, okay? And, and remember this last bit, this is the part that I really want to leave you with, is don't forget why we play this game. Don't forget why you pick up a bat and ball and a glove. You didn't pick up a bat, ball and a glove because you wanted to look good, because this, this shit's ugly, okay? A bat's ugly, uh, the ball's ugly because it hurts, and your glove stinks, okay? Cleats stink, all right? Uniforms don't look great, they look okay because this is what we've been programmed to think, all right? And if, if you're going to a party, you're not wearing a baseball uniform. Let's be honest, all right? So don't forget why you put your, why you put the uniform on, why you go out there, okay? Right now, it's changed for me. When I was a kid, all right, I wanted to go... I, yesterday, here's, here's a great thing. It just came into my head right now. It's a perfect thing here. Yesterday, the game finishes, and, and me and Glenn were sitting there, and we're having a beer, and we're just talking about, about just general life stuff. And, and, and there's this kid... And there was a group of them, but there was this one kid there who was throwing a ball against the brick wall, and he just kept ground, 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 ground. It was annoying the shit out of me, let me tell you. And I looked at Pharaoh, and I go, look at that kid. And he goes, yeah, it's cool. And I go, you know what? That kid's been going since I got here. And I got here almost, uh, probably halfway through the twos game, I got there. And this kid was, him and his mates had, were hitting in a cage, they were throwing balls, they were, they were having fun with gloves, in their uniforms running around, right? And I loved it, because it's exciting, it's good fun, right? And they're not putting their, their uniform on or their glove on because of, they, they want to go to work or because they, they know they're going to be disappointed. They're putting it on because they love it. They put it on because it's fun. And that's what this game is, it's fun. So for me, and, and I said to Phil, you know, given the chance to not have to worry about the day-to-day -day grind of life, your family, of work, of all the stuff that we do, I would do that all day because I love it. And I missed it for such, for such a long time. 
But that's not the reason why I go into it, okay? The reason why I'm there now is because I just love being around the guys. I love being a part of the team. I love chatting and talking about baseball because it's, I love it. I love watching it. Okay, my body feels sore the next day, let me tell you now. But at the end of the day, I, even if I don't play, I get to sit around guys and talk baseball. I get to talk, I get to, you don't get to do that anywhere else. Anywhere else. And it's cool. And it's fun. And that's why I put the uniform on. Because I look damn ugly in that uniform, let me tell you. All right? But I love it. I love being there. Yeah? So what's your reason for being there? Don't forget that when you get disappointed. Yeah, and maybe it's a happy place, but don't forget that. And if you find that you, if you're finding that your disappointment is running over into the next day, call someone and go and vomit on them. Okay, call me, vomit on me. Don't hold it anymore. You know, when someone asks you how'd you go, how'd you go with baseball yesterday, don't sit there and say, "Oh, how bad you did." No one cares. Okay. Go and dump it on someone and let it go, okay? Disappointment is just one aspect of baseball, okay? And the quicker you let go of your disappointment, the quicker you can win. It really it comes down to that. It really does. Because errors, they're going to happen. Bad at bats are going to happen. Recognizing how you, dis how you do disappointment is, is crucial to your success in the long term. Understanding... How you do anxiety is crucial for you in the long term. And lastly, understanding why you're there is crucial for you in the long term and in the short term. Because the way you feel it, the way you understand it, is the way you'll play it. The way you sit around and engage with the group is the way you'll love it. And you want that passion to come out. That's why I'm cool with you being disappointed. That's why I love it when guys are disappointed because I know that it means something to them. Okay? And if they don't, then they don't care. That's cool too. Okay? But that's enough for me because I've been talking for way too long. Um, if you guys got any questions, please don't hesitate to message me. Um, if, if, you, if you guys are having some, some challenges and, and you want a little bit extra, um, maybe it's just an approach, get in contact with me, message me, hit me up on Facebook, whatever it is, chuck in the, com in the comment section and, and let's chat about it because these live, and, and I want to just say this, these live videos are designed for conversation. So if you've got a question, if you've got something that you need to say, you want to get it out, dump it on there. Dump it on there because that's your... If, if you understand something differently, then you could help somebody else. If you don't know, maybe you're going to ask a question that somebody else doesn't have the confidence to do, to ask. So hit it up, dump it on there, and let's see where it takes us. There's so many different ways to look at things, and I, and I hope you guys are getting value out of these videos. Hit me up if you're not, because, um, or hit me up if you are, because uh, I want to make sure that we... we hitting the nail on the head for you guys, and we're, we're providing value in such a different way, because here we can't just be baseball club we've got to be a community and if we don't look after the community we don't have a baseball club it's just that simple uh, if you guys have any content that you think that hey do you reckon you could talk about this hit me up man hit me up and let's talk about it there's nothing that we can't get okay even if we don't know it we go get it we'll go get the information for you and we'll go give it to you okay we're a community and that want to support each other and, and that's why we do this. That's why I'm doing these videos because, you know, I can't always support you on the field because I'm not as good as I used to be, okay? Um, and, but I can support you this way. I can support you with the things that I know, with the things that I've learned, with the things that have been given to me. I can give to you so that you can go and do it. And then my, my, only, my only thing is I hope that this is what ends up happening and it's only my, my wish is that you take what you learn here and go give to somebody else. Take what you get here and go give it to someone else. Because if you don't, what's the point of learning it? Okay? Timbo, how you doing, mate? I, I give you a shout out, Timbo, because I know you get upset if I don't. So, how you doing, cuz? <laughs> um, so, yeah, go and take it and give it to someone else. All right? Uh, that's me for today. Uh, if you guys don't have any questions, we're all good. Um, definitely hit me up if you've got anything that you want me to, to talk about in the future. With, if you're feeling you're having any questions or you've got any... Um, Hey, could you talk about this content? Cool, hit me up. Let's do it. Let's talk about it, okay? Um, until next week, you guys have a great week. 
stay warm because it's bloody freezing. <laughs> um, yeah, stay warm and I'll see you out of the ballpark. Take care, guys.